Donald Trump made news this week that could affect two of our sister networks. First, he insisted that the Republican debate later this month on CNBC include opening and closing statements from the candidates, which the network did agree to yesterday. There's also word that Trump will host Saturday Night Live in this very building next month on NBC. Now, you'll recall that NBC dropped coverage of Trump's Miss Universe pageant because of comments he made about Mexican immigrants. Trump's SNL appearance raises a lot of questions. First and foremost, could the FCC's equal time law require the network to offer the same hosting duties to the other 2016 candidates? I want to bring in my panel right now. Uh, Kellyanne, let's start with this issue of equal time. Former attorney at the FCC told The Hollywood Reporter that other Republican candidates are going to have seven days after Trump's appearance to have these equal opportunity demands on NBC stations. Do you think anyone's going to take that up? I think a few will, and probably those who are underfunded and not high in the polls. Uh, they should do that. Instead of complaining about it, it'd be better to access the law. I've actually made this recommendation to candidates directly and just generally, mm -hmm. uh, publicly meaning Richard, over the years. And the way I've done it is if a, if a media outlet, particularly one that <clears throat> is a network, any media outlet, is only putting two or three Republicans in a poll versus, say, Barack Obama, President Obama for his re-election, I'd say, oh, but, you know, then they're broadcasting it, and they've only asked three candidates, and there are eight of you. Right. That wasn't really in 2016, but I've said, why don't you ask for some equal time? Because I think you could make an argument. Now, does somebody want to pay a lawyer and try to access it? But the fact that you can do that, maybe they'll be offered interviews on an NBC station. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll be offered interviews on your network here, MSNBC, CNBC. But instead of complaining about about not getting enough yeah. coverage. Here's my new tax plan, my new repeal and replace Obamacare plan. You're not covering it. Okay, go ahead and take your shot. So, Lynn, <laughs> for those of us who have longer memories here, this as we should point out this comes from none other than Joe Lieberman, who, uh, running for the Democratic nomination in 2004, <clears throat> was uh, supposedly angry that our very own Al Sharpton, then not part of MSNBC, but was a candidate, he hosted Saturday Night Live. Lieberman's campaign negotiated to have almost a half hour, a half hour of a town <laughs> hall, a town <laughs> hall with Lieberman rerun on NBC. So it has worked before. Well, I, it, squeaky wheels get grease. That is one of the many fundamental yeah. rules of politics. You know, maybe we'll need Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday Night Live to get in all the Republicans <laughs> if they're going to host. Right. But well, you know, here is my point. We had a three-hour Republican debate, and even in three hours, many of the candidates couldn't figure out a way to elbow their way in to say what had to be said. So they have some responsibility in this, too, is to figure out how to talk. Three hours. Now, I know we'll get to whether, you know, Trump saying that's too much. Of course, because the spotlight's on him. And the fact of the matter is, they could be, some of these Republicans could host Saturday Night Live between now and every primary, and it won't matter right. because they can't figure out how to communicate something in a way that's effective for them. Uh, you know, so in a way, it's moot. They can't maximize these media experiences that they have, even in, in a debate when they had all the time in the world. Jason, NBC took a position against Trump mm -hmm. because of the comments about Mexican immigrants. Right. Is this an about face for the network? I mean, is SNL somehow separate? Well, I, I think if if you consider SNL to be a comedy show as opposed to a political show, uh, they've had lots of offensive comics on before. <laughs> so I, I guess you can say that that's justified. But I'll say this: we we can take off the the, the politics hat for half a second. It would be an entertaining show, okay? Now, I don't want to see Bobby Jindal coach SNL. I don't want to see Rick Santorum. Most of these guys wouldn't be interesting. But people find Donald Trump to be interesting. I think this is as much for him being an entertainer and him being a reality TV show star as it is for somebody running for president. The, uh, Hillary Clinton was on SNL yes. a few weeks ago. Yes. Uh, you know, I didn't see Jim Webb saying he needed to be on SNL. And, and, and thinking of Jim Webb, you know, if you complain about the rules too much, as he did in that debate, uh, don't you look like you're whining? Mm -hmm. well, you don't look very presidential, right. <laughs> that's right. for sure. And I thought uh, Secretary Clinton held her own on SNL. It's not a really comfortable place for her, but she did something that maybe Mr. Trump will do when he's on SNL, which is that self-deprecating oh, humor, always. the person right. who looks just like you. And we all know SNL has a Donald Trump figure uh, <laughs> because they basically cover him week in and week out. Basic rule of politics, self-deprecating humor. A yeah. self-deprecating Donald Trump. That That'd be is, fun. Well, that would be amazing. If, we, if it actually <laughs> happens, I would be, I would be Amazed. Pretty much unthinkable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Still Maybe I'll say make Afghanistan great again. <laughs> still awesome. Ahead.
Stella awesome. had one of the most wanted men in the world escaped authorities again this week. We've got those details for you coming up next.